So now we've talked about your systems. We talked about what systems are, how systems work, and how they can be the game changer for your business. In this section, what I want to talk about is mapping your four to nine core processes so your business runs on autopilot. Now, we talked about this before. We talked about that you can have systems, you can have subsystems, and we can have business processes at the bottom of those systems, which form your organizational model. And what we're going to do really quickly is go through this portion of your booklet, and I'll put it up on screen, which is right here, your core processes. Now, I will tell you this. Everybody loves to make thousands of processes. And what, what I'll tell you is, if you're doing this right, you should have about four to nine core processes or core systems. Now, remember what I explained to you. That doesn't mean that you have two or three processes. What it means is that you have systems that are put together. Remember I told you you could have a human resource system, which might have employee orientation, um, employee management, which are different processes, but they're all under the human resources system. So let's talk about four to nine core processes, how you would map those on here. Let's talk about some ways and some ideas that you can use to make sure that you're mapping things in a powerful way. Okay, so the first thing I want you to know is when you're looking at this, you'll see the process, and right here in this first section, you put name. The name of the process. Now, when I first started, one thing that I did was I named all of my processes something. Now, you may be able to put your own flair or whatever you want when it comes to your business, but I recommend naming your processes. Now, the first process that we ever had, which was our primary value delivery process, and you can see it down here at the bottom, was the Massive Action Ecosystem. And what this basically was, was when we used to go consult with people, I used to charge people $2,500 a month to go consult with them, I had this process mapped out. And I know we've talked about this before, but I'll put it up on the screen again, and you can see this was my primary value delivery process. But I named it something to make it easily recognizable, not only for internally with inside the company, but also for people who are gonna get that primary value delivery. So I recommend doing something similar for all your processes. So first thing here is you take a process. So let's say one of your processes is you need to go, you have a marketing process or a product launch process. You would name that process right here and, and write it down. And remember in the other one, we talked about how you would actually map that system or map that process out so you can make sure that it's operating on autopilot. The next thing, who is responsible? Okay, so let me stop for a second and say this. One of the biggest reasons I see businesses are not successful because they don't have any accountability. And I can tell you this, if you have people in your organization who are scared of accountability, that says more about them than, this, than the measures of accountability. Let me ask you something. Right now, at your house, if, if all the lights shut down and everything breaks, and you called the electrical company and they were like, well, I don't know who's responsible for that, how would you feel? Yeah, you'd be pretty pissed off about that, right? Well, it's the same thing in your business. All these systems, by putting who's responsible for these systems, we have a layer of accountability that allows us to run a lot more smoothly because we know who's supposed to be looking over that system. Now, when you're first starting off in the first 30 days, don't worry about it. When I first did this, I was responsible for all the systems. The point I'm making, as we grow and as you grow, what you should be doing is looking to add measures of accountability because when you have measures of accountability and people you can count on, then you can be more successful. I'll give you a prime example. We created a program and the part of the program that I was over was the putting it together, the marketing, the aspects of it, and the overall strategic vision. I and mean, we talked about that as far as putting the right people in the right seats. But the customer service aspect, somebody else was responsible for that. And because they were responsible and they handled what they had to handle, the system just runs on autopilot because I'm not sitting there worrying about the part that I'm not responsible for. And if something goes wrong, either on my end or that end, we both have somebody to look at, look at and say, hey, this was your job, you were supposed to be responsible for that. So make sure that every system has somebody who's accountable for it. And then finally, your lead KPI. Now, this is basically stands for key performance indicator, and we talked about this before. But your KPI for each system should be, what does that system need to accomplish in order to make sure that it's running effectively? So let's say you have a customer service system. One of your lead KPIs for that might be customer satisfaction. If you bring in 100 customers and you have 50 customers who either return or refund, well, that would be an unacceptable KPI. We're trying to get it to where we have 90% customer satisfaction, so we want only 10% of people refund or they have a problem or complaint. You see how we would do this? In each system, you should map a lead KPI. Now, if you like numbers and you like to be very strategic, you might want to add multiple KPIs for each system, but know what's important is that you get the lead KPI 
So you know exactly how to measure. And these KPIs are just ways to measure your business's performance. And once you have one for each of your systems, then it's going to be powerful. Something we talked about also was the primary value delivery system. The reason this is important because, like I told you before, when you're trying to visualize something for a customer or even your team internally, they need to know what's the primary way that you make money. This is like mapping out the system of how you deliver your business model. Remember we talked about the 12 forms of economic value. Well, whatever form of economic value or your value roster that you use, what's going to happen here is you're going to want to use your primary value delivery process to map that out for your team. And a lot of times if you're doing stuff that's more information based, maybe you're doing consulting, you're going to want to map that process out so people understand that process when you're going out to customers and clients. So. That's basically what you use this page for, to map out your entire business. And once you got all this down, you'll have something that looks similar to this. Maybe not this elaborate at first, this organizational model that you see. Maybe not as elaborate as this at first, but remember what I told you, Gaul's Law. All complex systems that work evolve from simpler systems that work. So basically, to get to a very complex system, you start with a simple system and build on top of it. And you can build very simple systems right here and then build on top of it and create something very complex in the future. I'm glad you watched this section because I'm telling you, once you get this down, this is the thing that is going to allow you to run your business and go do other stuff, scale your business and go do other stuff. And you could literally be making money while being somewhere across the world, enjoying the life that you created for yourself. On to the next.